Welcome to today's Sigma Made Simple video. I'm Luke Stanky, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this waterfall chart I have here down below. I've already got some data. I've connected to the plugs, electronics, hands-on lab data, and I've already created a group of my data. I grouped it by quarter by date. And I'm going to make this chart you see down here below. It's a waterfall chart. But the best way to do this is to actually just delete it. So let's create it from scratch. First, I am going to create a visualization element. But before I can go too far, I need to build some calculations that are going to build this waterfall chart. To do that, I've got my total sales, you'll notice here, and then I've got a neg negative value. So you can see an example where negative values come into play. So the first calculation you need to make to make this work is a cumulative sales calculation. And you're just going to use the cumulative sum calculation. And I'm just going to do cumulative sum of the sum of the total sales here. Sum total sales. So you'll see there's my numbers, they're rolling up. And I'm just going to, let's build out this chart sort of from the get-go here. So here's that new chart type that I've added. I'm going to bring quarter of date to the x-axis, and I'm also going to bring that cumulative sales up here, and you'll see it's sort of going up. We're not actually going to use this value in here, but to build a waterfall chart, you sort of need this cumulative effect that's occurring. The next calculation we're actually going to work on is this start calculation I have here. First, calculate cumulative sales and then calculate the start. And there's two ways you can do this. The first way, the way that I typically will do this, is I will just take the, the cumulative sales and subtract the total sales. So I'm just subtracting out the value. And you'll notice it creates this zero value here for the first value. And then it basically gives me the next value. It's sort of a lag calculation, which actually exists in Sigma. I could just use the lag calculation and type uh, sum of the total sales here. So let's do that. Boom. And you'll see I just have a null. And I need to replace that null. And I can use the zero null function. And that's the other way to do it. But if I'm doing it my way, I'm doing it this way. It's nice, nice and clean. And from a formula standpoint, really straightforward. So I've got a zero and now I've got these values. I'm actually going to take now from this chart and remove this cumulative value. And I'm going to use this start value. This is important. This is our first calculation. I need this to build my waterfall chart. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add total sales here in to my example on my y-axis and i'm going to flip the order i want the start on the bottom and the total sales on the bottom on the top sorry and i'm going to change the color of that start to the background color so we've done that and then i will format my y-axis and get rid of those grid lines and there we have a waterfall chart let me just uh, also remove this legend don't really need it in there this works just fine if we now test it out with let's test it with those negative values so here's my negative example i'm just going to change my the my my column in here to negative example and you change it and it looks like it's working but if you sort of trace this it doesn't actually do what it's supposed to do completely and and plus it doesn't have the color on there where it's red for negative. So we need to create a positive and negative scale on here. So the easiest way to do this is just go sum if, and then we're going to say if that, in this case, our negative example, if that calculation, oh, well, that's not what we're going to sum up. Actually, it is what we're going to sum up. So if this negative example is we do want to sum it, but only if, and I'm going to use the sine function, negative example, if that value is equal to one. So the sine function, by the way, returns a one if it's a positive value and a negative one if it's a negative value. 
So if it's a positive value, just, you know, return it to the value. And you'll see here, it does that. And, and then, oh, perfect. So that's sort of our first value. The nulls are fine in this case. I'm going to copy this calculation. And for my next calculation, my negative calc, I'm going to type in the same thing. I'm going to change that negative. And I'm also going to put a negative here because I actually want only positive values returning when I fill this in. And I'm now going to take these negative and positive calculations. Notice they're basically just separating out what's positive. So positive here and what's negative here. And we're building this uh, waterfall chart. Back to the chart. I'm going to take that total sales. I'm just going to click drag and add in the plus and the negative value. And I'm going to get rid of total sales and again, change the, the start here to the bottom. And now what you'll notice is that the chart is almost working. It makes sense. The first value goes up and the next one goes down and then it goes up, 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 but it doesn't match here. So this, we need to get this matching. And the way that we make this match is actually just one last adjustment to our start calculation. We're just gonna take this start calculation and subtract that minus column as well. And when we bring that in there, I've made a mistake. Oh, yeah, I need to do zero null on this. So there we go. And it's not a negative, it is a positive. And now what you just watched is me problem solve in real time, how to actually get this to work. But there we have it. We've now have that waterfall chart working the way we would expect it to do from here. So we need that start calculation, values that are positive and values are negative. And the reason we've got to put this uh, plus in here, by the way, is that we need to adjust this bar chart because uh, the bars on a stack bar chart are only going to be positive. If the values on the negative side were negative, if I just remove this real quick, you'll notice that they're all going to show up down here. And that just has to do with the design of the bar chart. So we're actually solving some problems here uh, and making it a lot easier to work with um, by separating this out in the way that we do. Anyway, this has been a long video on creating waterfall charts, but it's sig Sigma made simple. And we're coming close now to the last week of the year, which is or of the month, which is wild. Anyway, this has been the video and we'll catch you in the next one.